Hi folks, welcome to another video on Bod's Reef. Today I'm going to be talking about nutrient balance in my tank, the problems that I've had recently and what I've decided to do. Uh, this video is going to show me putting in a new piece of equipment to rectify the problems and sharing my experiences with the unboxing and installation of this new piece of kit. So what's been happening in the tank is nitrates and phosphates have just started to creep up since I put some new livestock in. The system just can't quite cope with the bio load so as a result my nitrates have just creeped up to the testing between 8 and 12 parts per million. Uh, phosphates are at 0 0.08 at the moment which are both higher than I usually have with this tank. I'm going to be displaying on the screen shortly my water parameters for this tank which I've been maintaining for well over the last two years. I'm also going to put on there the water parameters that are on there at the moment so you'll be able to see the difference and see what I've decided to do to reduce these. So with the livestock and the corals everything was happy, everything was healthy, looking good no algae problems, glass was clean, only really needed cleaning probably once a week with the magnetic cleaner that you can probably see on the bottom right hand side of the tank. I've been moderately feeding the fish, I feed frozen uh, mysis, artemia, brine shrimp, things like that uh, and I tend to feed them dried seaweed as well which all the fish really like. I normally do 10% water changes a week using Red Sea Coral Pro Salt and I've been running Rowfoss in a media reactor in my sump. As with the way with reef keeping, you can never stop adding to your system. So once I added a couple more tangs, um, I was going to only add one, but under the advice of my local fish supplier, they said to add two, and then you won't have as much um, aggression shown with the existing tang. The purple tang has been in; it's been with me for about five years. Uh, in a previous tank for about three years and it's been in this tank ever since I've had it and I've had it about two and a half years now this system in this particular tank. I've got some live tail anthias in there which are heavy feeders um, so as a result with the new livestock and a bit of an increase to my feeding the nutrient levels have just been rising ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you in the sump I'm going to show you what I've taken out and what I'm going to be putting in shortly. The only other thing to note is as my nitrates have been rising ever so slightly I've been starting dosing NOPOX into the system. Now there's lots of different feedback you're going to get on the internet on YouTube about NOPOX. It did work for me, it did start to reduce my nitrates but it also seemed to be quite harsh and it was having a negative effect on the corals which is why I've looked for an alternative more of a natural method. So I've lost a couple of acroporas. The bird's nest that you see at the back is showing bad signs of health so I'm going to be fragging that one off probably in the next video to try and take off all the healthy parts of that one and hopefully bring that back to how it used to be. I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit on the bird's nest at the back just so you can see areas of it are still doing really nicely, other areas it was from the centre out really I started to get die off um, one or two other um, specimens are no longer in the tanks, they died off completely may or may not be down to the no pox, that's what I put it down to but uh, a lot of people do very well with no pox but I was kind of starting to see a few negative effects which is why I've switched to a different method Okay, so this is the sump on my Red Sea Reefer 350. I don't have any lighting in there, so I'm hoping you can see this all okay. So on the right hand side of the sump is where you get the cabinet. On there I've got my doser, where I'm dosing alkalinity, calcium and magnesium. In a separate video I'll go through how much I'm dosing to keep the water parameters that you see on the screen or that you saw earlier on. Uh, space on there for testing kits. I use Red Sea testing kits for nitrates, phosphates and magnesium. I use Salifert kits for everything else that I test. So into the sump itself I've got one block of Marine Pure which helps areas for my bacteria to colonize. 
that's only been in there for about six weeks uh, which was again another effort really to reduce my nitrates so I'm hoping that that will start to have an effect as well uh, the filter socks you can see on the right auto top up tank on the top there that's just about two thirds full at the moment I've got a Dell Tech SC 1351 skimmer that's doing really well that was only cleaned out yesterday and you can already see it's collecting nicely nice dark skimmate in there I've got the return pump on the left so this the heat is in there as well the space I've cleared out of the front is where I've removed my media reactor which was running Rolfos I may move that to the left hand side where the return pump is if the new addition doesn't work with my uh, reducing my phosphates but it's nitrates that I'm really targeting what I've decided to do is put an ALR1 algae reactor in here um, I've got a new brand new one to put in the system which I'm going to put in shortly that's running off an Eheim pump and I'm going to put the pump right underneath just at the back on the right hand side where the where the water comes down from the display tank um, that will be piped into my ALR1 reactor which I'm going to be running with Cheeto I'm going to initially run that on a 24 hour light cycle just to get the, uh, the Cheeto going but then I'm going to have it on a reverse cycle to the main lights in my tank so that should fit nicely in the front when this video continues if it's not in the front then you know it doesn't fit in the sump but I'm hoping it will do so that's my plan so I'm going to unbox that now and start setting it up and you will see that in position shortly okay hi again folks so the ALR1 is in and as you'll be able to tell from the light coming through the doors which I'm gonna to have to do something about but it's in and working so this is the reveal and there it is so that's exactly where I wanted to put it the plumbing is far from perfect at the moment that's definitely a work in progress but it's in for now so it does fit in fits quite nice actually into a red series for 350 my backup plan was to put it on the left hand side where the return pump is but it definitely wouldn't fit there I've managed to put the feeder pump for the ALR1 has gone underneath where the auto top up is right at the back which is perfect and that comes up feeds into the bottom entry where you'll see the red isolator switch little rotator down there so feeds in through there up through the center chamber out through the top and that's lit up by the LEDs there's no Cheeto in there at the moment I'm going to pick some up tomorrow so it's just a, an initial check and see that it all fits in nicely one thing that has worked out quite well with the install is I can still get to the heater which I am looking to replace and more importantly I can still get to the skimmer cup at the back my Deltec skimmer cup so I can see what's happening with that and I can access it quite easily when it comes to emptying it's a little bit awkward to open the top of the ALR1 I will say that so it, it needs to go on an angle so I can slide out the light fitting and then slide out the chambers where I'm going to be putting the, the Cheeto the little rack that goes inside it but it, it is possible I was tempted to put the reactor on the right hand side of which you may not be able to see too well now with the lighting but anything where you've got flow going through it is nicer and it's more peace of mind to have it in the sump just in case you get any leaks with it being a new product to me I don't know how it's going to perform as far as any potential leaks it does look very very well made um, so I'm not anticipating any leaks but just to be sure it's all in the sump so it, it wouldn't affect me if I did have any any leaks at all so there will be more videos showing how that performs showing the Cheeto and how I'm harvesting it and how it's growing in there and I will be putting more on relating to my water parameters so we'll be able to see that it has the desired effect I'm just going to finish with some handheld shots just so I can show you how I've done the plumbing in case anybody else is thinking of adding one of these to a Red Sea reefer so if you follow the long pipe I've had to put some temporary tie wraps on to one of the down pipes 
so you can just see that comes down the back there and goes right into the bottom which I thought would be the best place to pick up the water from to go into the ALR1 and then return and need to get a better way to keep that in place but with the piping being so new it's all coiled up so it's not wanting to to be exactly where I want it to go okay so let's just turn the light off for a second so you can see a bit better that's the cabinet side on the Red Sea Reefer so you'll see there my Easy Dose from TMC, that's the doser that I use with alkalinity calcium magnesium between these pots here and I mix up the solution myself you can just see there the uh, controls for my two power heads as well so I mix up the solution myself for the doser I use Fornamarin salts for that I'm going to do a bit of a review on that and uh, some of you may or may not have heard of that before that particular product so I'll do a review on that so just a few handheld shots to finish with the display tank bits of sediment in the water now as I've been doing bits and bobs in the sump so the water's not quite how it usually is you can see there on the back where I've scraped off that green algae there that's the bird's nest there which I'm going to be attacking this weekend so there's a little bit centre camera there that still is really nice and healthy so I'm probably going to frag that off as one piece and then on the right hand side where there's actually uh, a red legged hermit crab seems to be burrowing his way in up to no good in there there's quite a lot of healthy growth there so I've got quite a lot to I can I can frag off and try and have some healthy sort of restarts so you can see this main section here from the centre into the top left is the, the bit that's died off and I can only put it down to the no pox whether that's right or not I'm not sure so I'm going to wrap this video up now folks so thanks very much for watching any comments would be appreciated below and I'll see you in the next video